Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I hope you are ready to do a fun project. If this is your first time here, welcome. This is the social circle. This is only our second week of doing it. We had so much fun last week and we are so excited to be back every Wednesday at 1130 to do a fun, easy project with you. So my name is Trisha and I'm going to have Brian pop up here as well and say hello. Brian, do you want to pull up to Good morning, everybody. <laughs> and y'all know Brian. Brian's out in the background here and he helps me out. And we're just having a lot of fun getting ready for the project today. So running the show. Yep. Boom. He's making sure everything's working right for us. <laughs> well, I do see a few names in the comments here popping up. Do we want to pop up some of our friends here and say good morning? Yes, let's see who we got on. I think we've got quite a few people on already. Thanks for joining us, you guys. We really appreciate it. Patricia. That is my name. You're right here from Tennessee. That's awesome. Same name, same state, right? Wanda, good morning from Memphis, also Tennessee. Very neat. We've got a Facebook user. Hello from California. <laughs> oh, we've got quite a few people on. Thank you so much, Chris from Florida. Lisa, good morning. Thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate you. I know a lot of people are busy getting ready for Mother's Day this weekend, so... Does anybody have any Mother's Day plans? We've been making some special gifts here in our neck of the woods, but I actually am making a little gift for my mother that's not on the sewing machine. It's uh, something that I'm keeping secret though. <laughs> oh, here's a name I recognize. What's that? Simone, yes. She won some items during So Creative Live. Good morning, Simone. Thank you for joining us for the social circle as well. All right. Well, before we get, oh, from Nova Scotia. That's awesome. I bet Canada is beautiful right now. Lovely, lovely. Oh, I see somebody's quilting on Mother's Day. <laughs> My day to sew. That's awesome. You do you, right? <laughs> you do whatever makes you happy on Mother's Day. That's so cool. All right, you guys. Well, before we get into actually making the project, we can talk about what we're going to be needing. So I hope that you had seen our post on our Facebook group. We have all of the supplies listed there so that you can sew along with us. So if you are not able to, or if you were not able to get all the supplies beforehand, like I said, we will leave it up there. You can um, go back and gather the supplies and make it on your own and watch the replay. So that is an option as well. But we are going to be using, uh, excuse me, fabric. I'm going back and forth here. No, we've got three fat quarters only to do this project. So that is an awesome, awesome option. A fat quarter, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's a piece of fabric that is 18 by 22 inches. It is super handy because you don't have to have a lot of fabric in order to make a project like this. So this is an example of what we are going to be making today. It is a piped pillowcase cover. It is going to be using this form right here. This is called a pillow form. This one is 12 by 16. You can get a variety of sizes. So the, um, the measurements that we are using today are going to be for this particular size form. But we'll talk about it a little bit later on what you do to change it up if you're using a different size pillow. That's totally fine if you have a pillow form that's a different size because as I mentioned, they come in a variety of sizes, okay? So again, this is what we are making today and three pieces of our fat quarters. So you want to consider a couple of things when you're picking your colors. You can go all willy nilly and pick out whatever scraps you have, that's totally fine. Uh, but you're going to need one here to make the binding and that's going to be this right here where you make your piping. So you're gonna need one fat quarter to do that. And then we also have one to do your backing. This will be cut into two pieces and we'll go over the measurements here in just a moment. And then you also have one to do your front. So depending on how you want that to look, you can have it the same type of fabric on both the front and the back, or you can do what I did and do a different one on the front and then a different one on the back. And even yet again, another color for your piping. Okay. I'm gonna just scooch these out of the way. I've actually cut mine down so I can show you the sizes. And we can 
get started here in just a moment. Set you aside. Let's scooch this over here. We're doing a little bit more muted fabric today. <laughs> okay. So your front fabric that you're going to be using for this particular pattern is going to be the same size as the pillow form. So you're doing a 16 by 12. If you're cutting along, I'll try to talk a little slower so you can cut as we go. <laughs> so 16 by 12. And then your two back pieces are going to be, I believe, let me just make sure, 11 by 12. So you're gonna do two of those. And I already finished that edge here. And then for your binding, you just need your fat quarter. So a few supplies that we are going to need. We've got our rotary mat and our cutter. So we've got a few different rotary tools here. Now you could use the scissors if you wanted to, but accuracy is always a big key in order for your projects to turn out really nicely. So I like to use my mat and a ruler along with my rotary cutter. We've been a big fan of the True Cut brand back here in our studio lately because they are easy to use, they're safe. They've got a little lip on them that will interlock with your um, rotary cutter and you won't be sliding around. It locks in there and you won't be moving all over the place. So that's what I like to use. I use that one, but we also have a variety of other types of rulers and you can get little grippies that will help you hold it as you are cutting. So those are handy. We've got lots of different options on that. Another thing that I like to have on hand is a nice pair of scissors, some little snips, a marking tool of some sort. You can get a little ruler. We're going to be doing our binding and you just have to mark um, a little diagonal line. I find using a small ruler is a lot more convenient than trying to utilize one of the big ones for that particular point. So I like this one by six inch ruler, super handy. Or this one I think is two and a half by eight. Yeah, two and a half by eight. So either option, but this one's a great little tool. And we all know my handy dandy gauge, if you've visited with us before, I love this thing. I have to have it next to me all the time. So that is one thing. And then also a tweezers, again, a little tool that I can't be without, my little bent tweezers, use it all the time. We also are going to be needing piping, of course, right? We're making a piped pillowcase cover. This particular piping is 3 16 of an inch. We have a variety available on our website if you are wanting to have a, a larger piping or a smaller piping. We offer it in bulk um, on these little rolls here. So you can make lots and lots of pillows, right? <laughs> Enough to cover your couch. So we got the piping. And then it, depending on my day, I like pins or clips, but I, in this case, I just decided to have both of them and we'll see which one I feel like using. <laughs> and the other thing that I also like having on hand is a pinking shear. This is not mandatory, but we will um, cut away some fabric to eliminate bulk later. And pinking shears are really handy to do that. You also are going to need an iron and a pressing mat or an ironing board, something that we will be able to press on a little bit later. And I think, oh, a zipper foot. So a zipper foot usually comes with your machine. If you <laughs> maybe have a new machine, I'm going to let you know that sometimes they have the accessories hidden in the extension table. So this particular machine doesn't have a free arm where it has the little extension table in the front. But if you do and you've been searching for your accessories, just pop off your extension table and there's usually a little bag in there. And then that will have some of the common um, presser feet and a zipper foot is usually one that's included with the machine. So I think that we'll do it on supplies. Did I mention everything, Brian? I'm pretty sure. I think you covered it all. If, if we not, got it. the list is on our Facebook community page pinned to the top. Yes. So Brian had just mentioned, we do have that pinned to the top of our community page on Facebook. So if you are looking for a list of the materials, you can find it there. So I'll keep looking over at the comments. If you guys have any questions or need me to slow down or repeat anything, just let me know. I'm more than happy to do that. But um, we can go ahead and get started. So 
the first thing that we are going to do is uh, get comfortable, right? So don't judge me. I sew without my shoes on. So <laughs> I'm sorry if this is a little weird, but I'm taking my shoes off. So <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> I can't sew with my shoes. We just had a post about this the other day, and I'm like, I am definitely one that doesn't have shoes. Now, barefoot, it depends, but I don't like my shoes. <laughs> so let's take a look over on the comments. I see I'm looking for pinking shears that are small. Paula Becker, oh, we'd be happy to help you with that. I'm sure we have a variety available on our site that if you want to just go ahead and comment um, or call our customer service, they would be more than happy to help. All right, you guys. So as I had mentioned, we have the fabric here all cut out and ready to go. So I figured this would save us a little bit of time since um, it might take us a little bit to make this. I'm just going to separate this for myself. Okay. So this is going to be my front fabric. I'm just going to lay that up here. Now the two back pieces, one thing I do want to mention, the side on the front piece is 12 and then 16. These pieces are 11 by 12. So it's a little hard to tell which side is which. So I like to lay them on top of my front fabric just to make sure that I have the side that's um, 12 inches. And then that is where we're going to finish the edge a little bit later. So one thing to note. So I'm just going to lay it this way so I know I don't do it incorrect in a little bit. And then we have our little piece of fat, or fat quarter to make our binding to then make our piping. So. I don't have an overhead camera, unfortunately, so we do have a video showing how to make the binding and the piping. So we're gonna play that here in just a moment so you can see exactly how to do that, and then we will have our piping all ready to go. So Brian, if you wanna go ahead and pull up that video on how to make the binding, that would be perfect. I'm gonna show you how you can Thank take you. cording, fabric, and a really cool presser foot and make your own piping for an assortment of projects. Hey everybody, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. So let's look at the welting foot. Here we have a snap-on and here we have a couple of screw-ons. This one is a single welt foot and this one is a double. You can tell if it's single or double by turning it over and checking the amount of grooves on the bottom of the foot. Because this foot helps you create piping, another name for it is, you guessed it, piping foot. Let's say you have a variety of feet with your machine and the welting foot came with it, but you're not sure of the size. If you simply flip it over and measure the distance across the tunnel, that's going to tell you what size welting foot you have. When using a welting foot for best results, you want to use the same size piping or cording as the size of your presser foot. If you were using a really thick fabric, you wouldn't be able to use the same size foot as your piping because it's not going to have enough room. So then you would have to go up a size to allow for that thickness. Here I pre-made some piping. You can see that it's all enclosed. Now, this is a medium weight woven fabric. Let me grab a heavier fabric. So this is a, a faux leather. You can see that it didn't enclose it all the way. Technically, it's okay, but in this particular circumstance, I would have done a larger welting foot. To make your own strips, it's pretty easy. We're going to go ahead and grab a little fat quarter. So that's going to be 18 by 22. Unfortunately, you can't see the whole thing on the screen here, so I'll do my best to show you each side as I'm working on it. So what you want to do first is grab the bottom right and bring it up to the top left and make sure that that top part is nice and even. Just like that. So you're gonna form a triangle here and have an extra rectangle on the side. We can cut that little rectangle off and you can save it for later for a different project. This is your bias edge. So now that you've folded it into a triangle, you want to cut along the bias edge. We go as you can see it's not perfect but that's totally fine as long as you've cut on the bias we're going to clean everything up here in just a moment so we're going to take the top right part of the triangle and bring it down to this bottom left here match that up 
as best you can. Keep in mind what your bias edge is. Okay, so we've got our bias edge. We're going to carefully rotate that and put it vertically in front of us. Now here's where the cleanup part comes in. If you want to take a rotary cutter and a ruler and just clean up that edge, then we'll cut two inch strips. So now that I've cleaned up that edge, I can do the two inch strips. I'm just going to bring this over here. Now lift up your ruler and do it again. And just keep doing this until you're done. At this point, we are going to attach these all together in order to form a continuous strip of fabric. So I'm going to move these out of the way. I just need two pieces. I like to use different sizes since this one's longer and this one's shorter. We'll use those two. Now you don't want to just match these up. That's not going to end up turning out correctly. So you want to lay one piece right side up and you're going to form a 90 degree angle. So I'll be taking the next strip and doing it right side down and then placing it like this. I always like to double check that once you open it up, it's going to be a straight piece of fabric. You want to overhang on each side a quarter inch to allow for that seam allowance. So then you would go and sew your quarter inch. There we go. And I sewed my quarter inch and I got sloppy on that, but that is totally fine in this particular case. Not always. <laughs> We're going to be able to encase the piping and all of this is going to be hidden. So with it being uneven there, that's totally fine. But under normal circumstances, you want it to be a straight line. So I'm going to try that again. Take the strip that we've attached. We're going to form that 90 degree angle. So again, we're going to overlap and let's see if I get it right this time. There we go, that looks a lot better. Now press open your seams and then trim off any excess on the tips. Lay your piping in the strip and fold it over. You can pin it or you can use wonder clips. I grabbed this red fabric, it shows up a little bit better on film, so hopefully you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now that you've prepared your cording, you can place it underneath your presser foot, making sure that the cording is within the groove that you're wanting. You don't want to pierce the cording with the needle. You actually want it just on the edge. We actually have another video on the welting foot. There's some more tips and tricks in there, so I will include a link for that video at the end of this video. I grabbed a scrap piece here to show you that you can also use a narrow zipper foot or an adjustable zipper foot to insert piping. So just keep in mind that you do have to adjust your needle in order for it not to hit the foot. So I need to get as close as possible to the piping. So I'm going to move my needle over to the right. And remember, you don't want to catch the piping. You just want to be right on the edge. So I think I may be good. Maybe. Well, that's as far as I can go. So that works perfect. Hold it tight to the, the fold, and then sew. Stop, readjust, make sure it's tight. Oh, what's my, what's my thread doing? Well, let's fix that. There we go. So this is another option, like I said, if you don't have a welting foot. If you haven't already, please take a moment to like and subscribe. That way you'll get notified of any future video that we have. Although using the zipper foot is a great technique, I do prefer using the welting foot just because that tunnel makes it so nice and easy for the cording to be directed correctly and it just makes the piping process, piping process, piping making process, <laughs> the piping making process more enjoyable.
Here I've made a Christmas pillow showing off some piping. Although this is probably one of the more common ways to use a welting foot, it doesn't exclusively have to be used for pillows and upholstery. I was thinking about it the other day. If you place several pieces of cording next to each other and continued and just made a textured fabric, you could turn it into like a potted plant cover. Have you seen those natural uh, woven baskets? Just kind of make your own <laughs> makeshift one. I think it'd look really cool. Do you have any unique ideas where you could use the welting foot? Comment below. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the welting foot. Until next time, happy sewing everybody. So, so I hope that didn't confuse you with the welting foot, but I have the zipper foot mentioned in there as well. Today we are going to be using the zipper foot in order to make our piping. So, but the welting foot is pretty cool by the way. The other thing that I do want to show you is, Brian, if you want to just pop over to the other camera, thank you so much. Um, in that video, I was using a snap-on narrow zipper foot. For this machine, it's the TL2000QI, it's a straight stitch machine, so I cannot move my needle. So in that case, you can get a screw on zipper foot, and it has this little screw on the back, and you're able to loosen that up, and then you're able to move your foot to exactly where you need it to be. So this one is really, really convenient um, to get your placement exactly where it needs to be. And even if you have snap-on feet, you can still get an adjustable zipper foot, either in a low shank or a high shank, depending on what you need for your machine. So it's a nice accessory to have in addition to the snap-on feet. That's the route your machine has. So, all right, that camera's good. <laughs> Okay, so we were talking about the piping in that video. So I do want to go over with a couple little scraps here and just show you the process live here as well. So we're all on the same page. So I will have you switch to the other camera one more time, Brian, and I'll pull this up. There we go. So I've got these two little scraps of fabric. Now, the ones that you have are going to be two inches, um, two inch strips. So to make your piping or your binding, you lay your piece of fabric in front of you right side up and then place your next one 90 degrees and then um, facing it right side down. Now in that video, I had already cut it at a triangle or the diagonal. So in doing it this method, I actually like this a little bit better. You're able to just lay it across. You have a little bit extra on each side here, and then we're going to sew diagonally. Anytime that I'm doing any bias binding, I always wanna double check and make sure that when I sew, when I open up the fabric, it forms a straight line because there are those times when you sew the opposite direction. <laughs> so let's just say I did sew it right here. You go to open it up and it actually would fold back right here and it would be incorrect. Or you try to fold it this way and it's just this wonky little piece that isn't gonna do you any good. <laughs> so this way you can just go like this and then we are going to sew like this, corner to corner. It's a little, and this is where that little ruler comes in handy. You can just go from corner to corner like that That here, there we go. Make sure I'm out of the way for the camera. Hope you can see that. Is that okay? All right, be like that. And then you can just pin it in place. I usually use just one or two pins on either side just so your foot's not going to be hitting any pins. Make sure it doesn't shift on you. And then we can go over here. When doing this technique, uh, I got this little tip when we were at Baby Lock, which I was like, thank you so much. They actually lower the needle first, and then you can put your little corner right up next to the needle, and then you can lower your presser foot. You don't have to worry about back stitching right now. Um, we're gonna adjust that so we can follow the line. <laughs> As you can see, it is a disappearing marker. I love this thing, but you have to do it pretty quickly, so I apologize if you can't see that line very well anymore. Um, but we're just going to go from this point to this point over here. And you can see it's kind of right to the end. One stitch off and then I'm just going to 
cut my thread here. Anytime I'm doing this, before I cut off the excess fabric, I always open it up and make sure that it is a straight line. You just don't want to cut that off. So now we can take our scissors and trim this up a little bit. So with your binding, you need about 60 inches. It'll be the perimeter of your pillow, but I always add extra just so I have some more to work with if I need to. And then we'll be good to go. So now you would just continue to make 60 inches of this and then cut 60 inches of your piping. And we have our little snips. We'll clean up our thread as we go. And then I'm just gonna pop over to the iron and press open my seam quick. Take that, scooch it over here. And let's see if I can do this left-handed. Is that awkward? <laughs> You're gonna see me burn myself. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So that is all there is to it. And then we're gonna take our piping. I've got a little piece here. You want to take one end and when you um, use your fat quarter to cut your strips out, you're going to have a little triangle or diagonal here. So let's just, for visual effect, it's going to look like this, right? Well, what I want you to do is actually cut it straight across. And then we're going to fold this in about a half an inch or so and give that a press as well. Okay, that's all we need to do. Just take a little wonder clip to keep that in place. And then we are going to encase our piping. So you've made your, your binding, you have your 60 inches of piping. And again, this is extra. So what I like to do is actually put extra out here and eh, just a couple inches. And then we are going to encase the piping like this. And when we go to do that. So we're gonna switch our foot here in just a moment. But before we do that, we are going to finish the edges of the back panels. So let's set this aside for a moment. And we're going to switch on over to these back panels. All right, thank you, Brian. You read my mind. <laughs> okay, so as I had mentioned, the front fabric is 16 by 12. And then these back panels are 11 by 12. So you don't want to accidentally finish the edge of the 11, you know, where it's 11 inches, you want to finish the edge where it's 12 inches, because what we're going to do is lay two of these on the back and overlap each other. And everything's going to match up as a rectangle. So we're going to do it like these. So with our one piece of our back fabric, making sure that the side you're working on is 12 inches long. We are gonna fold that a half an inch and we're gonna press. I'm gonna stand up over here. That might be a little bit easier and I won't burn myself. <laughs> okay, and this is where my handy dandy little gauge comes in. There's all sorts of different options available, but I really like this one. It's easy for me to use. I can just kind of measure it quickly. Come on over here, do a little by sight here, measure as we go. And then we are going to, thank you, Brian, and do one more here. Half an inch. And this is just approximate. Don't worry if it's a little bit larger, a little bit smaller, it'll still do the same job. <laughs> okay, we're gonna finish this little side quick and then we're gonna take a short break. So I just wanna 
have you come on over here. We're gonna do two parallel lines of stitches. So this is also a preference. As long as both lines of stitches hit your fabric, you're totally fine. So what I like to do is actually use the side of my foot as my guide. I'm just gonna drop my foot, let my needle down, and so. And I don't have to back stitch here because my end's gonna be close within the seam. So I'm just gonna stitch this out really quick. I love the sound of this machine, it's so lovely. I'm gonna do this. Okay, coming to the end, we're gonna cut our thread. Pop that up. And then we're just gonna do another line of stitches right next to it. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I am just gonna line up my foot edge next to my previously sewn line. Lower my needle and off I go. Last week we were talking about this particular machine. This is a TL2000QI. It is marketed as a quilting machine, but it's great for garment sewing, bag making, crafting, all sorts of good stuff. It's a wonderful machine. I have the one that's one level up. It has the speed control and the subtension, so there's a few extra features. That one's the 2010Q. That's a good one too. All right, so there we go. We have our finished edge. I went ahead and already did that for this other piece. So go ahead and do that to both pieces and then we'll be able to resume. But we are gonna take a short break and we are gonna talk a little bit about an upcoming event that we have. So Brian, if you wanna go ahead and pull that up. Live is back for a special one day virtual sewing event celebrating National Sewing Machine Day. The event is hosted by me, Trisha, with Sewing Parts Online. We have partnered with some amazing educators to bring you a jam packed day full of sewing machine demonstrations, including embroidery, sergers, and quilting machines. Plus, sewing machine maintenance tips, fabulous special event pricing, and let's not forget giveaways. One day only, and we're going to be giving away over $10,000 worth of prizes. Let's have some sewing fun, all from the comforts of your home. We are very, very excited for National Sewing Machine Day. It's gonna be an awesome time. We've got lovely guests coming. We spoke with a couple yesterday, so we've got some good things in, in the works. So hopefully you can tune into that as well. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to do is, um, let's see, what did I want to do? I'm gonna put the piping on. Oh, that's what I was gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch out the presser foot here for the zipper foot. What I'm using um, right here is just your regular presser foot and that works great for doing the hem on the back pieces and then the rest of the time we are actually going to use the zipper foot. So this is a screw on presser foot. I'm gonna just take my little screwdriver here and we're just gonna swap out for the adjustable zipper foot. Very easy to do. The other thing too, if you do not have this zipper foot and you have a straight stitch machine like this, you might have a very narrow foot. You could make this work as well. It's just not going to be as tight to the piping. So it's nice to know that there are other presser feet that you can use if you don't have the exact one that you're needing. But welting foot, narrow foot, zipper foot, you can accomplish this with any of those presser feet. So now we're gonna just take our adjustable zipper foot and we're, this style wraps around the bar and then we'll tighten our presser foot screw back up. Anytime you change a foot, you always wanna double check where the needle is going to land when you lower it into the fabric. So let me tighten that up and then we'll just check ourselves. We do not need any broken needles popping in our eyes, right? <laughs> okay, so if you notice, I'm just going to move this foot so you can see exactly what I'm doing. If I had it right here, when I lower my needle, it's going to hit the foot and you are going to break your needle and you're going to have a bad day. So this one allows us to loosen up that screw on the back, slide it to exactly where we need it to be, and then we will go ahead and tighten it down, just like that. We'll get it pretty finger tight there. 
and then we'll be able to move forward with doing our piping. So the next thing that we're going to do is bring up our bobbin thread. I'm going to lower my needle and then lift it back up and that pulls up my bobbin thread. My handy dandy little bent tweezers. I'm gonna grab that. And then I'm going to get my sample again. So we were working on this piping. So we've got extra piping. We've got our folded edge. And then we're going to encase it within the piping within our binding. Now here, we want to get as close to the piping. We're going to sew as close to the piping as we can without hitting the piping. So, and we also want to start down a couple of inches. You don't want to start right up at the top because you're going to end up enclosing that a little bit later. So just make sure you start a couple inches down so you have some wiggle room. And then we're going to slide this under and make sure that we are right next to it. And then when we lower our needle, we're not hitting, but it's right next to it. You can use pins and pin this if you would like. You can do it this way. If you choose to do pins, I actually like to do it vertical with it, with your piping. That's an option. Otherwise, you can use Wonder Clips and they go right up to the piping and that works out pretty slick too. But you can also just encase it as you go. So if you had your piping off one direction and you're binding off another, totally fine. Just do a couple inches, lay it in the middle, encase it. And then what I like to do is grab it with my right hand and then I kind of hold in that little lip and then I sew a couple inches at a time. So we're just gonna do that and I am going to reverse a couple stitches and then we're just gonna sew down and then stop, readjust, put your piping in the middle, fold it over, hold and hold on the little divot and keep on going just like that. So I hope that helps you with some technique on how to do piping. It's a fun, fun technique. You can do a lot with it. And I would be very interested to see how creative people get with their piping after they, <laughs> they make a bunch because you don't just have to use it to make pillows. Although these pillows are awfully cute. Just like that. And the other end, we had left this folded. We folded this and had extra piping. You don't have to worry about it on the other end. So you can just finish your piping that way and then be done. And what you end up with is 60 inches of finished piping ready to go for the next step. So. We can go back to the other camera, Brian. All right, so now that we've completed our piping, we are going to take our front fabric. So our front fabric is going to be pretty side up. Just gonna move some stuff here. We're gonna do pretty side up. And then we are going to take our piping And what I like to do is start with our finished edge. Oh, do you want to, I guess we could leave that other camera up, Brian, I'm sorry. Keep switching on you. <laughs> Keep switching on you. Yeah, so we're gonna take our finished edge and we are going to place that towards the middle um, bottom of our pillow. And then we are going to put, I'm gonna scooch this over here so you can see. We are going to place the piping towards the center and then the raw edge of your piping is going to match up with the raw edge of your rectangle. Just like that. I hope you can see that. Here's the piping. Okay, so we're gonna make our way around and get that pinned. In this case, I am going to use pins. I'll probably actually use pins and clips. We'll see see which way we like it. 
but you want to make sure that the piping is towards the center and not towards the outside because we're going to get them encased in and do it that way. So we are going to work on getting an overhead camera, guys, because I'd like you to be able to see what I'm doing here. That'll be on our list. Okay, I'm going to scooch this over here again so you can see what I'm doing around the corners. Okay, so as you can see, we have to go around the corner, but if we don't clip this, it makes it a little wonky and weird and you can't lay it nicely. So when you get to about a couple inches from the edge, we're going to take our little snips and we're going to clip the piping, about four clips, just up to the seam, but not through it. This is going to allow us to move that around the corner so it lays nicely, just like that. And then you want to continue doing the same thing you were doing before, where the raw edge of your piping is matched up with the raw edge of your top fabric. And then we'll just give it a pin. Okay, yeah, my preference is definitely using pins for this technique, but to make it faster for you, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Wonder Clips. The reason that I don't usually use Wonder Clips in this particular circumstance is sometimes they can be a little bit heavy and kind of make your fabric fall over the side, but we'll, we will make it work. Just like that. A little bit more. And then once again, we'll do some clipping. Now, if I wasn't on camera, I would actually take this off and readjust because my little join here is gonna be right on my corner and it's gonna make it a little bit more bulky, but it's all right, do it like that. And then we're going to maneuver around. We will scooch over here. Is that okay, Brian? Mm -hmm. Okay. Makes it a little awkward. This is quite easy to do, but when I'm trying to get my hands out of the way, <laughs> I'm making it more awkward than it needs to be. I'm sorry, there we go. So while I'm doing this, I would love to hear what people have planned for Mother's Day or their weekend if you're not a m mother. <laughs> have any fun plans? My mommy is a thousand miles away, so unfortunately I won't be getting to hang out with her, no grilling or anything. <laughs> I see Linda, hello from Texas, hello Linda. Oh, look who's here. Who's here? Deb Porter. Hello, Deb. Late to the party. Well, luckily we have a replay, right? <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We're coming up and we're attaching our piping right now. We're just going around the edges. Looks like we have a question. We have a question? Oops, that's not a question. Well, hello from <laughs> Arizona. <laughs> Um, could you cut the corner first? I would not recommend cutting the corner first because as you're working your way around, you're going to have to manipulate your piping. And um, if you cut it beforehand, you might be in the wrong spot. So I would just wait till you get to it and then just do a few clips. As I mentioned, it, this is much easier um, to do when you're not trying to stay out of the way of the camera. <laughs> so now it's a fun little, fun little project. I've had the same pillows on my couch for a while. I think I need to mix it up a little bit and grab some, or make some pillowcase covers. See if I have some more Wonder Clips. I sure do. Let's see. So do we have any um, repeat visitors from last week? Last week was our first social circle. I, I realized that I put that question up wrong and it was hello from Arizona. Do you know who that was? 
was it was C Lombard, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> I was going to say that. I was like, oh, that's awesome. She is definitely a returning guest. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And we love seeing your name pop up. I do want to learn your your first name though. Can I we have a new friend too from not too far away? They're in Thompson Station. Oh, I love Thompson Station. It's beautiful out there. Welcome, welcome. Paula Becker watched last week. Paula, thank you for joining us again. We're excited to do these weekly. Gets us behind the sewing machine, having some fun with you guys. Oh, Renee Bolton. She's back. Hello, Renee. Okay. As you can see, I have extra piping. That's exactly what I like. You could be a little more precise, but that's all right. <laughs> Who's back? Robin. <laughs> Sir Robin, Robin the chicken. chicken. <laughs> we enjoyed that last week. <laughs> That's a Monty Python Welcome reference. Welcome back. <laughs> they bite your legs off. <laughs> yeah, that probably sounds weird if you don't ever watch Monty Python, right? <laughs> All I know is uh, company, company, company. <laughs> oh, let's see. Okay. I am going to bring this back over so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, Patri uh, hold on. Patricia Winters is in Thompson Station as well. Oh, wow. So maybe they can hang out. Maybe we could all hang out. <laughs> Ready for a sewing day in person, right? <laughs> okay. So the next thing that we are going to do is connect our binding. So I'm going to have to do that over here. Can you see okay if you put the... Um, Juki camera up. Okay, I'm, I'll try to do it just like that. So what we want to do is our finished edge where we had folded it in, we are going to fold that fabric back and get it out of the way. We do not want to cut that. I'm going to just pin it out of the way. And then we are going to lay our piping side by side. Okay. And I'm going to, you know what? I'm changing my mind on you, I'm sorry. We're gonna cut this off, get out the extra out of the way, and we'll attach our piping first. And then when we come up to the end, that'll be a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and get our piping attached. And I'm gonna start a little ways down. And do this. Okay, so we're going close to the piping again. And making sure those raw edges stay. And we're just gonna start sewing all the way around. I feel like we need some music at this point while we're sewing around the pillow, right? <laughs> Taking our wonder clips off. There we go. Do we have any questions that I can answer while I'm sewing around? I am gonna show you here, as we move around the corner, you might have to stop and lift your foot up and readjust a little bit, but usually you can kind of work your way around. Just kind of a little bit there. Move up. And then a couple stitches. And back around. There we go. Patricia, Alex is in charge now. Oh, Alex is in charge. All right. Alex, just let me know if you need anything. <laughs> Brian's leaving me, I guess. <laughs> Are you just going to watch, Brian? No, I've got something. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to go all the way around. Does Alex have a mic? No. Okay. The mic. Okay. And then it's been it's been off. It's back on now. Okay. There we go. Make our way here. Yeah, we are really excited, like I said, about doing these projects. Do I have a little note? We're doing a surprise giveaway. Mm -hmm. All right. No, I knew he was up to something. We'll have to talk about that in just a moment. 
We love surprise giveaways. This is even a surprise to me, so I'm really excited. <laughs> love that. Making our way around. How close to the piping are you, sir? Right next to it. Just make sure you don't sew the piping, but you are right butted up next to it. And this works really, really slick. Everything's secured and in place. You don't really have to worry about any seam allowance on this side. You're simply sewing right next to the piping. That's all you have to, to worry about at this point. Brenda, she's using a uh, adjustable zipper foot by Janome. Um, we carry a bunch of these kinds for each type of machine. So if you're interested in this presser foot, just give our customer service a call. Adjustable zipper foot. Thank you for answering that question, Brian. Come on around. Yeah, see, as I come up here to the corner, this is where my join is. I'm the only one that's going to know that, right? <laughs> that's what I'm going with. Looks good. As you can see, I'm lifting up my presser foot just a little bit, adjusting my fabric, and then continuing to sew just around the corners. Almost there. Getting closer. Is anybody sewing along? I hope you were able to get some supplies. Our friend, Sir Robin the Chicken, has a question for you. All righty. Any suggestions on sewing piping and keeping it tight when you have an extremely thick material? Always loosens up or I stitch into the piping, even with the piping foot. Oh, I was just about to say, oh, get a welt foot or a piping foot with a larger um, channel on the bottom. Now, question for you, are you using a smaller piping foot? Because uh, I have been made aware that some people weren't familiar with the fact that there are different size piping feet available and you can get one with a larger channel. And that video, if you had just popped on, we had played a video using the welting foot to make the piping. And uh, we go over the fact that there are different sizes. So I used a faux leather in that video and it was not, um, it didn't cover all the piping. So I had that very issue, but you can get a larger foot and then it should encase it all. But you are more than welcome to send me some pictures and I can take a look at it and see if I can offer you any suggestions too. We'll figure it out together. <laughs> I missed the start. Is that piping one you made or was it from a roll that you sell in the shop? This is one that we made. This is a technique where you take a fat quarter bundle or excuse me, a fat quarter and cut strips out to make your own bias binding. And then we encase the piping within. Good question. Okay, so here is where we're coming up to the end and we wanna give ourselves a little bit of room to work with. And I have no idea what happened to my tension there. I did not see that, but luckily we're gonna be able to encase that in and it won't be an issue at all. So we are going to make sure that that fabric, as I mentioned, the folded side, it's going to be out of the way. And we are going to cut. I kind of like to hold my pillow out as if it was nice and straight. We are going to lay our piping next to each other and we're going to cut it even because we don't want it to overlap. We want it to butt up to each other. Make sure you I'm trying to let you see. I'm so sorry. There. Make sure you don't cut your um, front fabric. You're just going to cut across here. Almost. I'm at a weird angle. Eh, there. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to just kind of hold it out straight again. And you want those two pieces of piping to butt up to each other. 
lack of that. And then we are going to fold this back over and we're going to encase this. And I actually went a little bit too far. Let's do, you can use a seam ripper or you can use little snips, but I'm just gonna snip this back just a bit. Everything is figure outable, right guys? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's our new motto. No mistakes, it's a design element. In this case though, I do need to cut it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's nice so, to see the troubleshooting. Patricia said that she tried to come in to the storefront, um, but we were closed for Good Friday, so she's going to try again. We would love to meet you if you if you come to the storefront. Just let Dennis know you want to meet us, and we'll come. He'll send us a message. But I did want to give you a heads up. I think people think that our storefront is like a full on store. Yep. Just know, Patricia, if you come up that it's you can't really shop for everything that you need. You can drop your machine off for service. You can uh, check out our demo machines and stuff. But as far as notions, it's pretty limited. But we'd still love to meet you. Absolutely. So I'm just going to trim that away. I think I'm just about back far enough. Okay. And then we're going to make sure they're butted next to each other. And then we're going to fold this over. Like that. And then you might have to cut a little bit more off depending on how it's laying. So that's why I like to hold my fabric up and just kind of see, see how that bunches up just a smidge. I'm gonna cut it just a little bit more so it lays better. So we're just gonna do like that. Teeny little bit makes a difference, right? <laughs> so, butting up, there we go. That looks better, everything's laying correct. And then I'm going to take my wonder clip pin that all together and continue sewing down. We're getting there, you guys, this is awesome. We're gonna have a cute little pillow. Okay. Okay, and then because I added more layers in there, I'm just gonna bring that over. I'm gonna go a little bit further down and then I'll back stitch. There. Okay, looking pretty, right? <laughs> Doesn't look fancy yet. So now what we are going to do is we are gonna take a short break before we attach the back of the pillow to our little cover. So we are gonna pop on a short video for you so you can see um, a winner of our previous events. Okie dokie. Okay. We're gonna start. Yay. Your phones are gonna die. We got time. Hi. hi, Brian. Hi, Elaine, how are you? I'm fine. I have Trisha here with me. She wants to say hi as well. Hi, Elaine. Hey, I really enjoyed the interaction the two of you have during these shows. It makes a lot of fun. Oh, well, thank you. We appreciate that. We have a lot of fun. So I always think, wow, too bad I couldn't work for them, huh? <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can. Where are you located? Um, in Goose, Indiana, close to Notre Dame. You can become totally yeah. proficient on your triumph, and then we'll have you do a video for us. <laughs> I checked the tracking. It's expected tomorrow. Oh, awesome. So excited. My grandsons are really excited. I told them they do. I've been teaching them quilting. That's awesome. And you can quilt with the Triumph. Uh, People don't really think about using their serger for quilting. So I've got a lot of projects lined up for it. Oh, that's you know so what cool. the best part of that machine is for me? What? What's it, that? It's got a motorized needle threader. Oh, I saw that. I have a brochure on it because I've been studying up on it. And I thought, well, that's a real plus. Um, the fact that it threads the loopers. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's super cool. Yeah. I've been kind of drooling over it over the last year or so, but thinking now I can't afford that. And then when I wanted, I was like, oh my gosh, it's a dream come true. Oh, Aww. that makes us happy. So Elaine, had you watched any of our, 
are so creative live events before or was this your first one? No, I've watched the one in the fall because you get all kinds of little tidbits and I'm looking forward to them. I have, I've printed out the dates, so I hopefully don't miss them. <laughs> oh, you're just making our hearts happy, Elaine. <laughs> I tell my husband, I said, you guys are fun to watch because mm -hmm. you're entertaining. But then I learn little, even if I learn one little tip from each session, I mean, it's just, it's just fun. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. We really appreciate That's that. That's awesome. We have a favor to ask of you. So sure. if you could, when you get your machine, if you would take a selfie with it and, sure. and send it to us, we'd love to share to show everybody that you really won the triumph. Because I think some people don't believe that we I think I think you're right. I think you're right. Oh. But if you would, if you could join our Facebook community page, that sure. way uh, we have a bunch of people that uh, share their pictures and we would love to see your picture there with you in the triumph, but also your grandsons or grandkids. Uh, projects uh -huh. too. That would be super cool. We have a really an awesome community also, so. All right, we'll do. All right, well, Elaine, thank you so much for calling us. We will definitely keep our eyes out in the comments during So Creative Live this year for your comments and make sure to say hi, okay? Okay, we'll do. Thank you guys very much for all you do. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Very have welcome. a good evening. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, that was such a fun call. We are so thrilled for Elaine. In fact, I was emailing her this morning just to see if she's made any projects. And everybody has a busy life, right? She said her grandsons are super excited to do it, but they're in Boy Scouts and they've got some other projects going on. So she said she's going to send me some pictures as soon as they make something fun. So super excited about that. Also, as we had shown before, we have our upcoming Sew Creative Live with the National Sewing Machine Day, and we are going to be giving another Triumph away. So that machine is valued at $7,500. So if you are interested in joining the fun, learning about all sorts of um, things sewing machines and winning some prizes and having the opportunity to get in on possibly live or winning that Triumph yourself, make sure to keep an eye out for all of the upcoming information on Sew Creative Live for National Sewing Machine Day. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Very, very cool. Next thing, Brian had decided we are going to do a surprise giveaway. We love giveaways. So today we are doing this August Dogs Day um, table runner. Super adorable. If you could see that picture. Oh yeah, you could see that. <laughs> very, very cute. And we're going to pair that with the handy dandy ABC pocket guide from Schmetz. This is all about needles. So handy, such a great resource to have in your sewing space. It tells you all about the needles, what parts of it, um, all different types of needles, what fabric, um, what needles to use with what fabric. Super, super handy. You can also attach your adorable luggage tag that's color coded with all the needles from Schmetz. And it's really funny, you're going to see fellow sewists um, when you're traveling, you'll be like, hey, what do you sew? <laughs> Are you a quilter? Are you a bag maker? No, luggage tag is super cute. So why don't we go ahead and pull up the giveaway tool, Alex, and we are going to pick our lucky winner. So let's go ahead and draw. Here we go. It's always fun to do giveaways. Who's it going to be? Harriet Ann Palmer, congratulations. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. If you want to just, um, let's actually, if you want to email me, let's do it that way this time. Uh, it'll be Trisha, and that's T R I C I A, at sewingpartsonline.com. And Brian, could you put my email in the chat so she can send me her information and we'll get this in the mail for you, okay? Congratulations. All right, well, we are getting closer to the end here. So if you're just popping on, we are going to be taking our front fabric. This is our front fabric and our piping is now attached. Remember that the piping is facing towards the center and not on the outside. So it's towards the center. And we have done two back pieces and we finished the edge on both of those, just one edge. So you've got your two pieces. We're going to have our front fabric facing up, pretty sides up. And then we are going to take one of our back pieces and we are going to have the finished edge towards the center. And we're going to have pretty side facing down. So I'm going to just lift this up so you can kind of see what's going on. Okay. 
And we're just gonna lay it there for a moment. And then we are going to take our other back fabric. Finished edge is going to, again, go to the center. And then we're going to line up the raw edges on the other side. This is going to overlap just like that. You'll see it's backwards for me. There we go. Several inches overlap. Now, before we attach this and so I just want to mention that for this particular pattern or what we're doing this project, there's quite a bit of overlap. So when you tuck that pillow in, you don't see any of the pillow. I made it with this one and I didn't have as much fabric left over. No problem, right? You can still do this, have the finished edges, but not have as much overlap. You're not gonna see this side anyway, right? So preferably I like having the overlap, but if you don't have that much material, it's totally fine to only have just a little bit. So super good to know. The other thing to note is you can do this pattern for any size pillow, if you noticed the front fabric is the same size as my pillow form. I like that because then it's nice and tight. There's not a lot of space. This one I made a little bit bigger than the pillow form and it's a little loose. Still looks great, it just has a different look. So I like it where take my pillow form and make my front fabric the same size as the pillow form. And then your back pieces are just going to be about three quarters of the size of your front fabric. So you can always do this with any size pillow. And then when you're considering your piping, the amount of piping that you need, it's just the parameter of your pillow and then add several inches for extra. So why not insert a zipper in the back? You can definitely do that. That'd be a different type of project, but you could definitely do a zipper in the back. You could also do the side zippers. I've seen people do those as well. That's another fun project to do. Yeah, very cool. All right, so we are going to attach the back pieces. The reason that I started with this one is it's not intimidating. So some people find zippers intimidating, and I'm not going to lie, I was one of those people. Uh, I was very scared to install zippers for quite some time. And now I actually really enjoy them. They're, they're a lot of fun. We laid this out nice and even, and we're just going to clip around. When you're clipping those corners, or when you're clipping them with the wonder clips, make sure those little tabs that you cut aren't flipped up. I just want to get these clipped all the way around. And I don't know, I'm so sorry about my squeaky chair, you guys. <laughs> it's a little, little on the squeaky side today. Maybe I'll try leaning forward. There we go, does that help? <laughs> I usually sit on the edge of my chair anyway. We'll make sure to oil it today. Yeah, we'll get it taken care of for next week. No squeaking. I hope that's not driving anybody bonkers. Okay, and then I'm going to do this corner clip that down and then we'll kind of make sure everything is lined up perfectly. Well, still squeaking a little bit. Still a squeaking. Do you have any questions coming up? I think squeaky chair just means that we need to get a new sewing chair. <laughs> squeaky chair means we need a new sewing chair. Well, that's exciting because we are actually going to be getting some new uh, chairs and new furniture in here. We are so excited. We had a visitor last week. If you've watched our So Creative Live, we've had Aero sewing. Um, they have chairs and furniture, and we are going to furnish our studio with their awesome, awesome products. And if you watch any of our TikToks, I've shared some of my videos from home where I use my Aussie because my Aussie is a full-size sewing cabinet and it is, um, I think it comes, when you open it all up, it's about 33 square feet of working space. I absolutely love it. It has a removable caddy, but I like to keep my, my caddy on the left-hand side of me. It's really, really nice. And then I just have my sewing machine in front of me and then my caddy to the left and I can just pivot and use my serger. Super cool. 
All right, so we are clipped all the way around. So now all we have to do is sew along the piping. So this might intimidate you just a smidge because you can't see the piping anymore. But if you want to switch to that other camera, oh, and I'll look up and she's already done it. Look at her go. Good job, Alex. You're a rock star. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start a little ways from this side here. We're just going to do a little bit of a back stitch. But our foot is pressed right up against that piping. You can't see the piping, but you can feel it. So you can use that same technique that I did before, where you just kind of feel your way. And your foot is going to guide right along that piping. You can just take your time. There's no race here. We're just going to go over. Underneath this section right here is that hemmed area from the other piece. So I'm just going to go a little slow. And then we're going to make sure that it's right up against that piping. Come over here. And see how my fabric is like kind of folding over? I'm going to leave my needle in, lift up my foot, and tuck that back underneath. Just like that. And then lower my presser foot again, and I can continue sewing. Straighten out my fabric and keep on keeping on. I don't know. Anybody sewing along with me today? We had several people last time. It was so much fun. We had pictures of finished zipper pouches. So I'm hoping we see some pillows on our Facebook page after this, <laughs> our Facebook group. We've got quite a few people that say they're going to watch the playback, but this is a good opportunity to let everybody know that if this live isn't enough time for you to make your pillow, then you can always go back to our YouTube page, usually within an hour, right? Yeah, it's very fast. Um, you can just watch the playback. You can watch it over and over again and make your, your pillow and then post the finished result in our uh, Facebook community page. We really, like, it, it honestly makes us both very Giddy. excited. <laughs> we like... Giddy's the word. <laughs> well, and it, I think it's because we both feel very touched that people take the time to even watch our videos. Yes. So seeing the people actually make the project, it's really, really cool. So thanks to Deb Porter and friends for posting pictures last week. Yeah, we enjoyed it. We were all excited afterwards. We're like, oh, we've got four pictures up. People were making their zipper pouch. This is so awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I want to see lots and lots of pillows. So you can see it from this angle. See how it shows the piping. You can't see it right you know, you have to kind of work your way, but it's not hard to tell where it's at. And then when I come to the corner, I'm just gonna slowly maneuver around. I'm gonna interrupt you for a second. Sure. Desta wants to know if there's a calendar of upcoming events. So there is a calendar of upcoming So Creative Live mm -hmm. dates in, it's pinned to the top of our Facebook group, but there is not a calendar of upcoming social circle events because we decide them within a few days before we go live. So it's really just what we're feeling. But Desta, if, or anybody that's watching, if there's a specific project you're interested in, uh, post it on the Facebook community page and we'll see if we can do a social circle on it. Yeah, and also Desta, we have had that um, in mind for quite some time. We would love to have a calendar on eventually. It is something that hopefully will be in the works, so it'll be easier to find, you know, when we're doing the social circle or when we're doing So Creative Live or if we're doing our podcast. <laughs> so yeah, we will definitely keep that on the back burner and hopefully it'll be sometime in the future. Where Do you, you want to tell them what calendar. we're doing next week? Because we know what we're doing next week. We are, what are we, oh yeah, oh, it's so cute though. I wanted to show the picture. Now next week for um, the social circle, it lands on, what is it, National Mushroom? Is that what it's called? National Mushroom Hunting Day. National Mushroom Hunting Day. So we were thinking it'd be really fun to do a mushroom block 
and you could do so much with it. So with the, the mushroom block, you could make multiple ones and do a little table runner, or you could turn it into uh, a little pot holder, or heck, you could make it into a quilt. I mean, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So you'll have to keep an eye out for the next event for the little mushroom quilt block. <laughs> yeah, we're pr pretty excited about that one too. As you can tell, we, we're just excited about projects in general. We, we love projects. And we love ones that are beginner friendly, that make you feel confident. You can complete them and enjoy the process. Have your cup of coffee. I had my coffee and I forgot to fill it beforehand. <laughs> we got ice, an ice maker here. So now we have the opportunity to make some ice coffee. So that might have to happen on next week's. Yes, next, next week we should make a drink, a coffee drink before <laughs> we start. We'll have two ice coffees prepped and ready to go before we If there's start. any ice left, because between me and Heather in customer <laughs> service, we eat all of the ice. Heather can do whatever she wants. She is having a baby. <laughs> Oh, I'm told that expecting mommies like ice. So is that true? <laughs> okay, we're coming around to the beginning. It's just a little bit more. Our, uh, one of our viewers said it, it would be nice if we could post a list of, of supplies before the actual live stream. Mm -hmm. So there is a list of supplies for each live stream pinned to the top of our face com Facebook community page. And we post it every Monday so far is what we've been doing. Yep, so because, join our Facebook community. Yes, please join our Facebook community. We'll have that information there for you. And there's a little discussion board on there as well where we'll be posting the instructions afterwards. So. In addition to be able to watch the replay, you'll be able to read the instructions too. So hopefully you have everything you need in order to make this. All right, so if we wanna switch over to the other camera, we are just gonna grab our pinking shears. And if you're not familiar with pinking shears, they, they are funky little scissors that have little zigzags on them that you can use to trim fabric here and it'll help prevent fraying. You can also do, um, this, I should say, it works great for woven fabric. Knit fabric, you don't need to pink because they don't fray, but woven fabric does. So we're just gonna get rid of all this bulk. And then the fun part comes, we'll go ahead and turn this right side out and stuff the pillow. Yeah, so I'm gonna measure my pillows when I get home and see how much piping and how much fabric I would need in order to cover all my pillows. Cause like I said, I've had my same pillows on my coach for several years. I think I need to mix it up a little bit. I don't put anything on my wall picture wise. So maybe I can decorate my living room with pillows. Does that sound like a plan? <laughs> I have one picture in my living room. I need a uh, decorating help. I was gonna say there's something oddly satisfying about pinking shears. Like listening doesn't it to sound nice? Use them. This is so nice. Yeah, over the bulky part, you kind of have to be like, err. <laughs> Go over that. Yeah, maybe I should have the close-up camera so you can see what I'm doing. If you're not familiar with pinking shears, let me see if I can scooch this a little bit. You want to swap it to the other camera? <laughs> Give a little peek at what they are. See. Your little zigzags. Paula makes a Paula makes a good point. Do you want to talk about some of the other ways you could finish edges? Oh, awesome. Yeah, you use a zigzag stitch to help with fraying. That's a great idea. You can also use an overcasting foot, which is really nice. Uh, we also have some videos on different seam fish finishes like doing um, a French seam. We also have where you're doing a clean finish where you're almost sewing it in. Uh, but personal favorite though would probably be the overcast foot, like I said. And we have a variety of presser feet for different models of machines. So we can do that. Um, keep in mind, if you have a straight stitch machine, you wouldn't have the option of doing a zigzag. So that's where 
the pinking shears are a nice option for you if you can't do a zigzag stitch. But great point, love that. Okay, I think we get to go to the fun part now. Let me make sure I grab this. Alex, if you wanna to swap to the other camera. I'm gonna just open up this pillow. My microphone's probably not gonna like that. Let me just use this. Scissors. So you don't hear all the crumpling. We're just gonna stand up so we stop squeaking, right? <laughs> okay, so at this point, we've got our little pillowcase all wrong side out. We're going to flip it right side out. How cute is this? Okay, grab the corner here. We have a variety of tools available as well to help you get the corners popped out nicely. This one's not as tricky, so we can just use our finger, but I love having a point turner for those hard to get to corners. Okay, awesome. And if you wanna pop up that other camera so I can show the results, you can see how cute it is. See, you've got your piping, bless you. <laughs> got your piping here, and then your cute finished edge from um, your back part, and now we can stuff the pillow. So here, there's quite a bit of overlap. If you wanna go back to the other camera, Alex. So there is quite a bit of overlap, so you can see that the pillow and the little pillow cover Looks like you're gonna have to work a little bit for it. So <laughs> what I like to do is the one that's overlapped, I lift that up first and then I work in the pillow all the way into the corners first. And I'm sure people have tricks for putting their pillows in their pillowcases at home. I do the little, put my arm in there and then fold it <laughs> and then stuff it in. So go ahead and get that corner all the way all the way in there okay and now we've got it like this we're gonna pull that pillow back and bring your other side up and plop it in there and work that corner in it's a little bit more work when we have that much overlap on the the back fabric but I like the end results and then you can kind of tuck that in. Looks nice and neat like that. And then you have yourself an adorable little piped pillow. Isn't Yay. that cute? We did it. Good job, Trisha. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for putting up with my squeaky chair and my weird angle on my machine today. But I hope you guys had a lot of fun. If you are just popping on, again, just a reminder, Prior to the event, we are posting all of the materials on our Facebook group. So just to clarify, that's not our Facebook page. It's our Facebook group. It's under Sewing Parts Online Sewing Community. You can find a list of all of the materials and we will also post the written instructions. You can come back to our YouTube channel and under our live section, we'll have all the replays of the social circle. So you'll be able to watch back any of the projects and be able to follow along that way as well. And you can always ask questions in our group and either we'll help you out or some of our wonderful friends will help with that stuff as well. We've got a great community and we have a lot of fun over there. So I hope that you guys will be posting some pictures so we can celebrate your little pillow and you join us next week to make that adorable little mushroom block. So Brian, do you have anything to say, Alex? Nope, just thank you for watching. <laughs> Everyone's like, nope, it's time for lunch. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm hungry. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday, and we will see you next week at 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Happy sewing. <laughs>